Welcome to Night Hacking at the Ordev Conference. And I'm joined by James Turnbull, and we're going to chat a bit about Docker. Hi, pleased to be here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the Docker framework and why, why folks might want to might wanna use it? Sure. Docker is a container virtualization technology. Um, but I like to tell people that the, the technology part, the virtualization part, isn't actually the most interesting part. The most interesting part is it's really about the workflow. It's really about the experience we're trying to build, which is that most of our users are developers who have code, and they've built this amazing code, and they want to ship it somewhere where it'll run, like in production, and they reach the classic sort of DevOps problem of like, works on my machine, doesn't work in production, end up in conflict with sort of operations people. Yeah, no, I think the operations group is the bane of most development teams' lives. So we want to make that experience better for both the developers and the operations people by creating a, a tool that allows you to, to run your code locally, if you're a developer, in an environment that is portable to production. So when you run that code again in production, you're running it inside the same Docker environment, get the same user experience, the same bugs, stops you having that conversation where you go, you know, worked on my machine, now ops problem. Cool. So probably the... Um it sounds like the main selling point is the developer workflow for how you integrate with Docker. So how would your, let's say, let's say you're a hacker and you're using Docker framework on your project, what would your, what would your um, turnaround cycle be for implementing a patch or a bug that you want to push to production? Well, it's pretty easy. So if, you're, if you look at, at GitHub, there's a lot of projects out there that have a Docker file in them. And Docker file is basically a little description of how to build your application into something that Docker can run. It's a really simple, simple set of instructions. What I would do is I, I say, you know, I define some dependencies, you know, like um, it's a, maybe it's a JVM application. I say install a JVM, add my source code, do a little bit of configuration, and then tell Docker what to, command to run to run my application. Um, every time I make a change, I can uh, automate the process of creating a new Docker image, we call them. And that new Docker image I can then distribute to around to people and they, when the next time they want to run my application, all they do is run that version of the image. Uh, every time I make a change that involves um, like a, a new commit or some new source code or new, new dependencies, I can get Docker to automatically rebuild the little Docker environment for me. Cool. And um, are there any noteworthy open source projects which are already using the Docker framework? Um, I think one of the first to jump on the bandwagon was the Jenkins project, which is a continuous integration tool. So it makes sense that they're, they're very interested in Docker because it makes yeah, it easy to run yeah, things. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, but uh, last count, there were about 20,000 projects on GitHub that had Docker files in them. Okay, so that's, that's not too bad, not too shabby. <laughs> so you're also speaking here at the Ordev conference. Have you already given your session or is that upcoming? I gave my session at 20 past 10 this morning. Nice. And I'm assuming it was on Docker. I was talking really about the intro an introduction to Docker, really focused on helping developers understand why they should care about Docker. And I'm pleased to say it was standing room only. So Nice. So did you get any zinger questions in your session? Did anyone hit you up with a really good one? Um, I think a couple of people were, were sort of, uh, you know, I, I think when you when you talk about something that like Docker, they're, they're people are like, there's a lot of hype around it. So that people are like, are you trying to sell me something? So we had a few people who are a little bit skeptical. Um, but I think uh, I think most people walked away pretty happy. Uh, I, I, you know, certainly we we don't claim Docker is a panacea. It doesn't solve all of your problems. It's not going to cure world hunger. Um, but you know, we think it makes life significantly easier if you're a developer. And I think. I hope, given the response, that most people walked away going, that's something I should try. Cool. No, that's awesome. So you, it sounds like it's really cool for developers. Do operation guys like Docker? Yeah, there's a couple of reasons operations people like Docker. One of the reasons is that developers do, because uh, uh, anything that reduces that friction between like my code runs here and it runs in production, um, operations people don't want to have that fight either. They don't want to be working up at 3 o'clock in the morning by some application breaking, and they don't want to have someone tell them that, oh, well, I can't fix your problem because it worked for me. Um, but also, um, Docker scales really well. Container virtualization is very lightweight. So you can pack a lot more Docker containers on a bit of bare metal than you can on other systems. If you're an operations person and you own the budget for buying those servers, if you can buy a few less servers or a few less licenses, that's pretty attractive. Cool. And a lot of people are moving towards cloud deployments for their applications. So um, which of the public clouds has good support for Docker right now? 
I think a better question is which don't. Um, so uh, Amazon, GCE, Rackspace, uh, all of the VPSs like DigitalOcean and Linode, um, IBM SoftLayer, pretty much you name a, a, a cloud platform and they've got Azure, runs on Microsoft Azure, um, which is a pretty, not a lot of technologies can say that they, they were natively running on Azure fairly early on the piece. Cool, no, that's awesome. Sounds like it's been really successful. So are you, have any other plans while you're here at out in Malmo, Sweden, or are you headed straight back? Um, I've been here for a few days. Um, I unfortunately got very sick when I arrived, and uh, a combination of that and jet lag meant that I spent about 18 hours sleeping, but um, I intended to go to Lund, I believe it's pronounced, and see the cathedral there, and uh, uh, I really like Copenhagen. I've got a bunch of friends there, so I'm going to spend a couple of days there too. Cool. So a couple of days on the tail end of your trip to kind of enjoy, kick back. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much for doing a short interview on the Night Hacking website, and I um, hope you have a safe trip back. Excellent.